Hi, this is Alfred from AB Tools. Uh, I still get uh, requests from time to time to show a little bit more of the software that we have on the Ankas. And this is just the embedded software that comes with an Anka grinder, uh, Tool Room Studio. And uh, so I thought I'd go through the end mill wizard again and uh, just show you how easy they make it. Uh, I'm not giving anything away here because uh, anyone who has one can do any of this. Uh, I'm just working on it. I'll, I'll just do it for an end mill so, you know, I won't get in trouble. So anyway, we go to the wizard and uh, end mill wizard and say, um, we have a lot of choices here. I can make any one of these uh, fairly easy. Um, so let's just choose a, a square one first since we've done that before. Actually, I'll, I'll choose a corner, right, corner radius one first. So we'll go choose that one. Let's do, um, we'll do four flutes just to make it easier. 500 diameter, we're gonna make one and it's gonna be out of carbide. And hit next. And I'm gonna choose too long, too short because that's the normal way people like to have their uh, end mills made. And then we can choose a number of different things here. We can choose uh, if we want to make it in lead or helix, uh, whether we want it to be right or left hand cut, and whether we want it to be right or left hand helix direction. And, and what degree of helix, if we were doing lead, then we could tell it, I like to do it in inches. We could tell it the, the decimal equivalent of the lead, which is the decimal equivalent of the helix. Um, programming in lead allows me to be able to uh, do other things, in other words, uh, like when I make my special tools and stuff like that. Uh, so, but, but for this, just being a basic uh, end mill, we'll leave it in helix. That way we can, we can uh, define that, that angle a little easier. So on this page here, we have a lot of manufacturing options. We can add chip breakers to the end face, uh, eccentric relief. We can do a lot of stuff that uh, normally I would do in the program if I wasn't making it in the wizard. Um, you can see here even unequal flute spacing or a different lead or helix per flute. So that's your variable helix. I'm just gonna make a normal one though, okay? So once you hit finish, it generates, uh, it says, well, what wheels are we going to use for this for this job so I'm gonna go ahead and use all the wheels here except I'm gonna change this one because I want to use a different wheel pack and that one's good there all right so basically you see it's saying you want to use that wheel for fluting plunging uh, for the clearance on the heel so the radius secondary basically uh, radius gashing is just like in face gash but they, it's a done a little bit differently for radius uh, gashing. It actually follows along the contour of the radius uh, on the face. And then OD corner end finishes. So that's grinding the OD and then the corner and the end all at once. Okay. So then once we do that, it should generate a simulation if we chose the right wheels. Okay. So there you see we have the simulation of the, of the part of the uh, end mill we're gonna make. So it shows us everything just like that. Now normally, uh, you know, let's say I wanted to change the flute length. Um, I might go into the commons here and say right now it's set for like a 840 uh, flute length of cut and the flute length's always a little bit longer. Uh, you notice it says the lead in the metric equivalent to the 30 degree helix. It's just because that's the way that, I mean, obviously the machine's from Australia, so everything's working in metric. But I can change all that, but I don't need to. Uh, so, you know, basically that's what I do. Right here we show uh, basically how much material is going to come off the end of the blank. Right now it's just a raw blank in there. Um, and uh, basically the diameter. So, you know, you can change things. Uh, a lot just by, by moving a few numbers around it. Let's say if I wanted to make it a real stubby one, I could say 0.3 and uh, say a 0.325 flute length. And you see the change that will occur in the blank here. So you see now I got a nice stubby little end mill here. Maybe I want it to be one inch by uh, say one inch or two five flute length. So 
how it's going to do that. So you see, so now I got a nice longer length of cut. All right, and then also we can go into the operations and we can say, uh, hey, uh, you know, how is it? How is it fluting it? So right now it's set up for two passes on the flute. You can see the different things there. But if I'm doing this kind of job, I'm just going to go one pass. You know, I, I don't need to play around with going real slow. This machine, this MX-7, is real fast. I'll probably uh, increase the feed here. And and I don't even have to go. Um, uh, so so on this page here basically shows our hook angle how we want to how we want to do that um, at the end of tool and the shank and then it also shows our core diameter so that'd be that surface there and it also has a nice little help menu so if I want to hit that it'll show me you know what is that actually doing you know if I didn't know I can also choose my wheel um, and then so we'll go back to the simulation and then uh, it also gives me a cross section like I had up here earlier, uh, and then uh, I can have I can say how wide I want this. I can either do it in a, a clearance angle, how much I want it to roll over, or I can do it uh, just by telling it exactly how wide I want it to be, either at the end of tool or at the shank. Uh, here I'm telling which coolant nozzle I want to go off. I can also choose different s styles of washout. And then over here I call out uh, adaptive grinding and that what that does is says you know what do I want my power to be at in other words so that I don't overload my spindle and that way I can put my max feed rate and my target power so it'll go up to 20% and up to four inches uh, and, and, and it might even run it say if it was a really big blank it might run at half an inch a minute you know uh, but it'll keep it at 20% or below on the on the power uh, I also like to do a uh, adaptive gain and that basically keeps that power range from fluctuating a lot you know we don't want the needle to bounce up and down as it's fluting uh, and then let's see so this is that plunge I was telling you about so we got if we go here we go to help I think show see it shows what it's actually doing here so I'm actually kind of grinding that if we look at the that's this yellow one here it's, it's kind of giving us a tertiary angle basically on the end okay again you can choose everything there uh, radius gashing so this basically it, so I'm choose I chose that wheel there uh, what that basically tells us is this gash here you know what where is it gonna be okay how, how, how is it gonna look you know as far as how the machine's going to do it how far down is it going to go how far down is the short teeth going to go how long is that going to be that's what we call the walk angle here uh, and then our uh, that's the actual angle and not the length and then this is the uh, angle that it goes out at you know and, and how much it's doing it at uh, and then we go here uh, to our corner and, and I can set here, I can set, maybe I, I don't want 10 degrees on the primary, maybe I want 12. Maybe I want a little bit more uh, primary clearance. Uh, the end is a little high, but you know, maybe I'll, so maybe I'll change it. But you know, you want to keep it about the same because it's grinding the whole thing at once. So you know, if you, if you play around with it too much. Here I like to go a little bit deeper on my end. Uh, I might even go a little deeper here because I know my wheels are a little warm. So that's why I'm doing that. Okay, and then here I might uh, tell it uh, instead of a, a linear washout right here, I want a radius, you know, so that way uh, it gets a nice smooth entrance down here. Okay, you see that? So now it's a nice radius here. Maybe that's a little too big, I'm starting too far away. Okay, and then uh, over here I want to tell it to. Uh, uh, to pivot a little bit more if I go to my help here to show me what that is see I like to have a little bit more than that to give so I'm working more on the corner of the wheel Okay, and then that way I can clear better anyway So now you see so there we got the thing with all the different changes in there All right, so that's it. Basically. I would just the only thing I need to do now is digitize the 
the end of tool. And what that does is allows uh, allows me to probe the end of the tool so that the machine knows where it is, so it doesn't take off too much material. Okay, and then the last thing that I normally like to do, is you see here, we just kind of have this little stub. I like to know if, um, if my wheels are gonna hit the um, holder. So what I do is I, I basically draw in the holder, the blank and the holder. That way I know if I'm gonna hit it or not. You know, and, and I just kind of, you know, I, I know the size of my holder, so that's how I'm just kind of jumping through here. So now you see that's my holder and now once I do that it shows the whole thing and as you can see I'm not hitting my holder that way it's it's good to go and then after that I save it and I'm done so that's it pretty quick and also tells me you can see here it kind of estimates the time of the cycle and that can change very on varying on the adaptive grind that I showed you uh, so there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a long video. I'll, I'm not even sure if I can download the whole thing, but see you later.